Okay, I think we're up and running. So this is going to be a practice session. Uh, not all the problems are new in the second half worksheet that we've uh, been giving you, but I will be covering all of the new problems in this video and some practice with the old ones as well. All right, so we're going to graph f of x, absolute value, positive multiplier, v shape of. Slope is going to be one third of six or a two to one slope. So every time I go over one, I'll be going up two. But let's find the vertex first. So negative two makes the absolute value of zero. So that's going to give us our minimum distance. And we're measuring distances now from negative two. Uh, and that'll get me a five, which means that the y-intercept is on this side. Zero gets me four and five. Zero gets me nine. Okay, so what is this as a piecewise function? As a piecewise function, we have a decreasing side Follow from left to right and an increasing side. So Alfred Hitchcock, f of x equals decreasing side, increasing side. And then all I have to do is copy. One third parentheses, 6x plus 12 plus 5. But I'm only using that branch on the left side of negative 2, which is for x value is less than negative 2. On the other side, I'm increasing, so it's positive 1 third, 6x plus 12 plus 5 uh, for x's that are greater than or equal to negative 2. Okay, so that's one way you can get the piecewise function. The other is to recognize that the slope is 2 to 1. How do you get from 5 to 9? You go up 4. How do you get from negative 2 to 0? You go up 2. So there's your slope, right? And hopefully you can sort that out, which means that as a shortcut, you could have simply realized that you're going down at two to one, going up at two to one, and passing through the point negative two, five. So therefore x plus two plus five, and therefore x plus two plus five. That's a little more helpful when you're solving equations, you've got less operation to work with and less inverse operations to work with. So let's solve this now for a height of 19. And if we use the slope, I've got to go over two and up four, that takes me to 13. Over two and up four takes me to 17. Over two and up two takes me to 19. So I went over two, two and one, I think. I think I went up five units from here. Okay, but let's actually go over here and take advantage of the eraser. And we'll set each of the branches equal to 19. So we're going to set each of these branches to 19. And we're going to solve very quickly. Subtract 5. I think I was on the right side a second ago over here. So subtract 5, 14. I divide by 2. There's 7. Take 2 away. That's 5. And I think we said we'd be changing by 5 units. I think. I forget. Well, let's put a 5 in. 42, 1 third of 42. 342, 14, 14 plus 5, 19. Yeah, so this checks. Okay? And so if I had negative 2 as the vertex, and over here I get 5 gets me 19, then another shortcut is moving 7 units this way, and negative 9 should solve this. Let's find out. Subtract 5, 14, divide by negative 2, negative 7. Negative 7 uh, plus 2. Negative 7 plus 2, oh, minus 2, excuse me, minus 9. I forget what I said. Oh, yeah, that's what I said, minus 9. All right, so those are the two values. Now we put them on a number line. Negative 9, oh, sorry, positive 5 on the right. Negative 9 on the left, and then we want to find out when we're bigger than 19. Well, I'm bigger than 19 with those dots, right? And so I'm going to be to the right of my answer on the right and to the left. All right, but what are we going to do? We're going to check by plugging number bigger than five in here. Let's put a million in here. Let's put a million in here. I right? do all that math. Do you think it's going to come out bigger than 19? Of course it is. Right? So therefore, this is true. We know that they alternate. But you can check out those intervals. And so the original question was or equal to. I call it g of x after that. It should be f of x. So it could be equal as well. So therefore, 
from negative infinity to negative nine bracket, union bracket, five to infinity gets the job done. Those are the X values that make this statement true. Okay. Now you're going to try to do the cosine of a negative 11 pi or a six in your head. Cosine of a negative 11 pi or a six, you see if you can get an answer in five seconds or less by doing the work in your old noggin. And I'll just do it out quickly for those who uh, uh, really got to keep drawing the circles for a while. So, circle, six parts, good drawings get good answers. Good drawings get good answers. I think that's fairly decent drawing. Pi over six, 30 degree reference angle. 30 degree reference angle, one sixth of halfway around, right? If we're radian measurement, which is what this is. Minus 11 pi over six is in this direction, right? So if there's six on the top, there's six on the bottom, 12 all together, moving in this direction, 11, should have taken you right to that triangle. And we are looking for the cosine. So the cosine is positive root three over two because we're going to use a coordinate system here, all right? And that's approximately 0.87. So the exact answer to this one, root three over two. Now you try 29 pi over six. Again, try it in your head. Just see if you can visualize what's going on. And if not, then we'll draw it out. So 29 pi over six, Ooh, I got my answer. Okay, so circle again, 29. So we got, again, six chunks. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six pi over six is here. 30 pi over six is also right here, right? That's five pi. One pi, two, three, four, five. And we want 29, okay? Very similar triangle to what we had over here. The only difference is the widths are negative, but the height's still positive. Your answer to this one, one half. Tangent, 41 pi over four. Tangent of 41 pi over four. Okay, let's make sure you can see that. Yep, 41 pi over four. Circle. Oh, lost the old rotator cuff on that one. All right, let's see. Circle, there we go. Call good enough. So chunks of four, good drawings get good answers. Pi over four, radian measurements is the same as a 45 degree drawn in standard position triangle. All right, so where are we at? 40 pi over four is over here. 40 pi over four is 10 pi, right? And that's on the right side of the circle. One pi, two, three, four, odd, even, odd, even, evens here. And I want 41. So there's my triangle. These distances are the same, and you should have root two over two, root two over two, and one, in the old noggin, and I'm looking for the tangent, which is sine divided by cosine, opposite divided by adjacent. So in this case, that answer is one. X squared minus six equals five X. Major gaps from algebra one. We got to close them. So you go try that problem now. And I hope that you're starting to hear the mantra, set quadratic equations to zero. I hope your brain is saying, oh, if you can factor it, go ahead, because that's quick and easy. I'll make it a plus. I'll make it a minus. What do we need? We need minus 5. So that's going to be that. Maintaining the fact it's an equation. Oh, there's two places on the number line where I get 0. One of them is 6. The other is a negative 1. You were looking at a quadratic. Right? And you were looking at those for roots, negative one, zero. That's a, you know, a clearer picture of what's going on. So your answers are negative one works and six. Let's just put six in. 36 minus six is 30. Five times six is 30. By God, it does work. All right. Now, 8a cubed plus 27b cubed. Hope you see that as the sum of two cubes, which is a special factoring case. You're pausing the video each time, I hope. Getting a little practice in here. So how do I write 
8AQ plus 27BQ as a product, cube roots. Cube root of 8A cubed is 2A. The cube root of 27B cubed is 3B, and I am adding. So that's how you start. Everybody's capable of learning that. The next parentheses is based on this parentheses. I've got to get back to 8A cubed. There's only one way to do it, 4A squared. I've got to get back to 27B cubed. There's only one way to do it, 9B squared. And both of those are always positive. The issue is, what do you write in the middle? How do you get it quickly? By looking at the first parentheses and multiplying the two terms, the two cube roots. And if you multiply, you get 6AB. The only thing you have to remember is to get rid of that. And in class, we can multiply this out and see the cancellation, but this is just practice, right? Now, if this had been a minus, then that would have been a minus, and that would have been a plus. Those are the only changes you got to make. All right, so that one's out of the way now. What else have I asked you to do? Simplify, reduce this fraction. Well, you're pausing the video and you're trying to reduce. Well, you got to write it as a product. Right, then we just practice this one. So pause the video and see if you can come up with what I'm about to write. Final answer, this fraction could have been reduced to x squared plus 2x plus 4 over x plus 2. Honestly, it looks easier to plug in numbers here than here. But we got some mechanical practice anyway. Okay. Uh, bingo, bango, bongo. So we got to move over here. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to do this column of problems. And I'm hoping that by May 15th or whatever our final exam is, that each of these problems takes, maybe this one will take us a little bit more than 20 seconds. Everything else should be done in 20 seconds or less, each problem. All right, so bingo, bango, bongo, maybe more than 20 seconds because you got to write that for a while to get in the habit of doing that. All right, so what do we have over here? We've got 2x minus 3 times 3, which is 6x minus 9. That's bingo. I've got 4 times 5x minus 1, which is 20x minus 4. Then I got three times four is 12. And this is why we're doing bingo, bango, bongo in that fashion. Because without learning to do this, most folks make a sign error. We don't want that. So 6x minus 20x minus 14x minus 9 minus the minus 4 is plus 4. So minus 9 plus 4 is minus 5 over 12. So there's the reduced fraction. And that method takes care of an awful lot of fractions. I would not use it if, if this was a 12, for instance. That was a 12. We still could do bingo, bango, bongo, but hopefully you just multiply the left side, numerator and denominator by three. All right, now element of 10 thirds. We're going to use the rules of logs now. All right, so element of 10 thirds is the ln of 10 thirds. Could have been written as, I don't like the way I wrote that. The ln of 10 thirds could be written as the ln of 2 times 5 plus ln of 3, oh, minus ln of 3, subtraction right, division, right? And what's the ln of 2 plus 5? The ln of 2 plus the ln of 5 minus the ln of 3. My classes already know those approximate values. Uh, if you're just coming in and watching this and you don't have, get on a calculator, you'll see the ln of 2 is approximately 0.7, the ln of 5 approximately 1.6, and the ln of 3 approximately 1.1. I suggest you memorize those because that gets us 2.3 minus 1.1, 1.2. Okay? That's what you're going to get to get 10 thirds. Okay. E to the 1.2 is approximately that number. 
All right, now let's do it organically. 10, two times five over three, two, e to the 0 0.7, five times e to the 1.6 over three e to the 1.1. And if all we're looking at is the exponential activity, what do you do with those exponents? I hope you said you add them. Well, that's where that addition is. And that's exact, that's exact right there. And then what do you do with 1.1? Division, you subtract. Well, there's the subtraction. There's the subtraction. Right? And those are some of your rules of logarithms. Uh, now we're gonna do the ln of eight. The ln of eight. If you're using the rules of logarithms, then you would say that that's three ln of two. And that's approximately 2.1, because ln of 2 is 0.7 approximately. Where does it come from? Well, 8 is equal to 2 cubed. 2, oops, 2 is roughly e to the 0.7. And I'm cubing, which means I'm doing what with the exponents? I'm multiplying 3 times 0.7. Well, there it is, 3 times 0.7, put a little dot there. So this means that this is the same as ln of 8, you can see that, and this x component is going to be multiplying times the power associated with this quantity in E notation. Those are equivalent statements. There's another rule of logarithms. Uh-huh. And now we're going to do ln of 45. All right, just using rules of logs this time. That's the same thing as the ln of 9 times 5. And I know that that's a product, ln of 9 plus ln of 5. And I know ln of 9 is ln of 3 squared plus ln of 5. So I'm finally there, 2 ln of 3 plus ln of 5. That's 1.1 times 2 is 2.2, ln of 5, 1.6. So final answer, 3.8, rough, 3.8. Now, 45, we said was 9 times 5, which is e to the 1.1, which is 3 squared times e to the 1.6. So what are we doing? We're doubling 1.1, which is doubling the ln of 3. Well, there it is. We're doubling the ln of 3, and then we're adding that exponent, 1.6. Well, there it is. That's the organic approach. Sorry, I didn't capture everything. Well, I guess I, guess I did capture the 3.8 for practice. All right, now we're going to solve this equation for B. Uh, just get some practice in here. So this question, A over B plus C over D, I'm not sure what the quickest way is. Generally, I like to clear a problem of fractions. So how am I going to clear this of fractions? I'm trying to solve for B. Well, let's multiply everything by B, D, and F. Let's do that multiplication. So the B's cancel, and I get ADF. ADF, all right. The D's cancel, and I get BFC. Sounds like a fast food chain. And then the F's cancel, and I get EBD. Now, if I'm trying to solve for B, I got to get my B's together. So why don't I move this one that way? So that gives me ADF equals E, D, D minus, I'll move B, F, C to the other side. And now I got to get B alone. Well, I can do factoring for that. I can factor B out, E, D minus F, C. And now I can divide by this parentheses on this side. A, D, F over E, D minus F, C will get me the value of B. Wow. All right. Now we're going to graph x squared plus y squared equals 100. 
Well, I'm seeing a circle. I'm seeing Pythagoras. I'm seeing the old x, y, 10. And as y gets smaller, x gets bigger. As y gets smaller, x gets bigger. And I'm starting to see that rotation, that Pythagorean rotation. So the center is at 0, 0. And the radius is 10, because 100 is 10 squared. And that's what you were looking at over here, all those square areas. Okay? So uh, how does that help us? Well, let's put a zero in. If you put a zero in, you get plus or minus 10. Zero gets you plus or minus 10. If you let y equal zero, you get x plus or minus 10, and a whole bunch of other you know, values that we could take time to find. But that's it in a nutshell. Uh, so what do we have next? We have x squared plus 6x plus y squared minus 8y equals 20. All right, can you sketch that? Can you find the center of that circle? Can you find the radius? Well, Pythagoras is based on squares, so let's complete the square. x plus 3 squared minus 9. And let's complete the square. y minus 4 squared minus 16 equals 20. Right, so now we got x plus 3 squared plus y minus 4 squared equals 49. Now oh, I can see my center now, negative 3, 4. And I can see my radius, 7. Okay, just practicing here. Now we got 7x squared equals 9x to the fourth. Why are we continuing to do those problems? Because we're not getting them yet. And it's algebra one. And you got to really pay attention here. 7x squared equals 9x to the fourth. I said something five minutes ago that you should be doing for all equations, and it is get your variables together. So let's move this to the other side. What is a helpful way to do this problem? Factor. What's common? x squared times 9x squared minus 7. How many answers to this problem? Four. Okay, where are they coming from? Well, double root and x equals zero. And if I solve this, 9x squared equals seven, x squared equals seven ninths, then I get plus or minus uh, the square root of seven. Uh, wait a minute, I wanted to divide by nine. Right, I was thinking about already doing the square root. So the square root of seven thirds. Those are your answers. There's actually a double root, x squared, right? Because x squared could have been written as zero times zero. A double root. All right, so that's that one. Then we got the sine of a minus 11 pi over four. Doubling up on those unit circle problems because you really need to know those for future classes. So a sine of minus 11 pi over four, I'm just gonna do it real quick. So minus 12 pi over four, oops, on this side, because it's odd. Minus 12 pi over 4 is the same as minus 3 pi. I'm coming this way, so I want minus 11. So that's my triangle, 45 degree reference angle. And positive 1 for the hypotenuse. What did I want, sine or cosine? I wanted sine, so the sine is that height. And that height is negative root 2 over 2, which is approximately negative 0.71. Need to have a feeling for size here. All right, cosine of 19 pi over 3. 19 pi over 3 is pretty close to 18 pi over 3. All right, so 18 pi over 3 is over here. All right, 6 pi, an even number. We want to get 19. So a nice drawing, a nice 60-degree triangle. And I hope you know what that cosine, what that adjacent to hypotenuse ratio is. I hope you're saying I have. Get more familiar with those 30, 60, 90s. All right, there's 20 problems, and then I'll do the second half of the worksheet. Some of those are new problems. Some of them are old. The old ones are there because we haven't mastered them yet, and we're trying. All right, so there's some practice for tonight.